All right, so today I'm going to take you through how to depackage or decase your Mobius Mini and recase it into the HD backpack for the Nemesis X. So, um, it's going to be a little bit of a weird video today because uh, I actually don't own the case for my Mobius um, when I built this. Uh, the first time round, I actually chopped up the Mobius case to get the board out and threw it out because I knew that I was never ever going to put it back into the original case. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this apart. I'll explain the differences. Uh, when I do get a customer order for a full camera and I decase proper Mobius, then I'll talk properly about how to actually do that. So um, the assembly of this is pretty much identical, though somewhat upside down, from the original Mobius Mini. Uh, it uses all of the same hardware, so all you're really going to need is a good quality fine tip uh, Phillips screwdriver. Let me just see if I can adjust this focus so things are clearer. That's better. Yeah, so good quality fine tip Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, there's two screws in the rear of the case. This is the same with the original case. So you're going to undo those two screws. Now keep in mind these are small self-tapping plastic screws. They are absolutely tiny. So do not lose them. I uh, tend to keep a little plastic tub or something that I can just drop them into. It also helps if your screwdriver or whatever it is that you're using um, is slightly magnetic. That can be a good thing as well. So once you've undone the two screws from the rear of your Mobius mini case, it's just going to be a matter of, essentially your case is going to be like this thing is upside down, it's going to be a matter of prying off that top, and what you're going to see is the battery with the little connector, so again I'm going to focus this to get it as clear as possible. You've got a little connector for the battery. You can see here I've played around a little bit with testing with super capacitors and things like that to see if we could get rid of the battery. Turns out the battery is actually the lightest and best uh, option for this. Um, I believe possibly when you pull your battery off there may be a little bit of double-sided sticky tape. You'll see here I've got a little bit of uh, it's like a silicon gel from a cell phone dash mat and I put it in there just so that there's no chance that the battery's gonna bounce around while you're flying and cause your video to be shaky. So once you pry the battery out, try not to wiggle it around too much, these are kind of stiff leads, just disconnect it from that JST plug there and you can put that one aside. So I'm just gonna put that gear over there. Now this is the view that you'll be greeted with when you open up your case and have removed the battery. So if you've got an old style board, I bought this camera quite a long time ago, never really used it until I've put it into the new case design. Um, so if you've got an old style board, you'll see the ribbon cable goes underneath the board and there's a connector on the back side underneath here. If you've got a new style board, you'll see that your ribbon cable actually has the connector up the top. This case works with both, uh, however, it is a little bit more of a tight fit with the original ribbon cable, um, but as you can see, it obviously works perfectly fine. So uh, now what you've got is you've got three mounting screws. So again, I'm going to try and get this a little bit closer. Looking around the camera here, so it's a little bit difficult. So you've got one up here, one in the middle on the left-hand side, and another down the bottom on the right-hand side. So you're going to want to remove those, same deal, taking care with the tiny, tiny little screws. I'm trying to keep this somewhat in frame and focused. Now this is where the more tricky part comes in with the original Mobius case. So uh, 
you will see in the original Mobius case it has a white center that this board actually attaches to and the lens unit itself passes through the front of that white center. So what you need to do is you need to just carefully pry away this connector on the back of the sensor mount. And now you're going to get to the point where you've got to pull this board out. Now this is probably the most dangerous and trickiest part of the whole assembly, uh, or decasing I should say, when you're pulling it out of the original Mobius case. Um, what there is, is on the back side of this board, underneath this little SD card holder, there's the digital signal processing chip, and that there has a, it's kind of like a double-sided thermal tape, which attaches it to the back side of the case. In this case, we've replaced that double-sided thermal tape with an actual aluminium heatsink, which is exposed to the outside. Um, is always going to get good airflow, so the cooling is hugely upgraded or optimized in this design. But uh, getting this board out off of that double-sided tape or thermal tape is quite difficult. So what I actually did, I actually, on the top side of my, imagine this is the Mobius mini case, on the top side I actually took some side cutters and cut away the black plastic part until I could carefully pry that up and pry it away from the board. Uh, what other people have done is actually lift the board out. So you just have to be very, very careful because all these tiny little capacitors and resistors, uh, you definitely don't want to go damaging one of those. So uh, if you're confident that you're never going to use your Mobius Mini for anything else, I actually recommend cutting away the top. Obviously, if it's if you've bought it for this purpose, uh, make sure that you test it thoroughly first so you know that you're not going to have to send it back. Worst case scenario, you can actually buy replacement cases from uh, their or Mobius's online um, eBay store, and they're actually not that expensive. So removing the board for me is pretty easy because I can just press this heatsink in the back, and that pushes the whole board up and out. So I'm just going to put that to one side. So as you can see under here, let's see if you can see, I'll <coughs> bring this for a close up. It's so underneath here, that's your digital signal processing chip. And it's obviously now covered by this, like completely covered by this heat sink. Let's just bring that image down a bit darker. Yeah, there we go. So that's what makes this such a, a better design in terms of providing better cooling allowing the circuitry and everything to run more stable. Now while we've got this apart, you do need to watch out for these little, well, hang on, I'm focusing again, there we go. You do need, do need to watch out for these little components that are quite close to this. Um, in the process of designing the case and test fitting it with cases that weren't quite perfect, I did actually manage to knock one of these resistors off and yeah, it was a pretty fiddly job to solder that back on. Um, luckily, I, I managed to, and it still works fine. Uh, I haven't had any issues since, but do keep in mind when you are installing the case that that is going to sit on top of one of these screw bosses. Let's see if we can get that so you can see it. There's a screw boss in there. Um, and so when you're putting it in, you don't want to be sliding this back and forward across the top of the screw boss. Uh, too much if possible. You want to be fairly, care fairly careful with that. Right, so decasing the board from the camera. If we look on the underside, this top left corner here, because remember you're going to be looking at it from this direction. So this is your little microphone chip. And you're going to want to be prying this off towards yourself. So if you remember that underneath this top left corner here, there's actually quite a big clear area of pad. There are a couple of little capacitors just there. Um, you want to watch out and try not to pull on those. But if you do need to pull somewhere on the board, uh, that area there is a good place. Um, alternatively, if you have something like this little dental pick that I'm using, uh, you can actually reach in through one of these holes. This uh, center one on the left 
is pretty good if you reach to the outside of the board to apply some force. Um, same with this top one. It's probably actually the best one because there are no components around it that could be easily damaged. So one way you could pull it out is simply hook something through there and just pull on it. Now the double-sided tape they use isn't so much tape. It's actually has a little bit of thickness to it. I'm just wondering if I have something nearby that might have some of this stuff on it and I don't. So that's a bummer. Um, it's kind of like a... Uh, it's almost like a Play-Doh like sort of tape and it's not aggressively adhesive as such um, so What you really need to do is find a way to grab this either there or there or even maybe try and Put a little bit of tooth floss or something Around the board to get it in behind it and then just gently apply pressure and just hold that pressure there and what you'll find is the Double-sided thermal tape stuff they use because it's not aggressively adhesive uh, it will actually just slowly release and pull up. Um, there are a couple of these cameras that have been built. I obviously destroyed my Mobius case to get mine out. Uh, the other guy that built his, he managed to pull his board out without pulling the case apart. So it just depends on how you feel about doing that. Once you've got the board out, then you can pull the sensor unit out. I'm not going to pull the sensor out of this um, because I've obviously silicon glued that in, but I am going to talk you through the process of what to do. Getting the sensor out of it is really pretty easy. Um, it just... I believe you can slide it straight out without even having to take the lens off. Um, because of the way I disassembled mine, I think I actually took the lens out and then took the sensor unit out before I pulled the board out. Uh, that definitely wasn't the best way to do it. it. means you have to go back and refocus the lens. Luckily, the glue that they used to lock the lens was still stuck on the the lens itself so I could match that up with the sort of triangulated sections on the sensor that you'll see once you get to pulling that up but um do your best to try and pull that sensor out in one part if you can now what I'll do I will seeing me pull this out we'll also show you how to put it back in You may have seen on the Nick Burns video, sorry, that was probably off frame, that I had some, on the early prototypes, we had some glue holding this lens in place to the front of the case itself. Um, it definitely wasn't the tidiest solution, and yeah, while it worked, it just it wasn't very pretty. But what we have found is we've got this silicon thread. So I would have provided you with a piece of silicon thread with your case. Um, and I'm just quickly looking for a ruler so I can give you an idea of... Oh, there it was. I was going to say I was sure I was prepared for that. So I have that piece of silicon thread at roughly 55 millimeters long, somewhere around there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, all you're going to do is you're going to put that back in. Once you've glued your sensor mount into the case. So, uh, alright, now we get on to the assembly. Assuming that you've got this all nicely apart. Um, your case has come to you looking like... This one here. So we're just going to... Let's focus that out a little bit further. Now, your case would have come to you like this. You've got the heatsink separate. Um, you've got the, the base plate and the camera itself. Uh, I believe the way I shipped out the last one, I've wrapped this in a little bit of foam or something, put it inside the unit and then closed it up. One thing to pay attention to is this lip here on the front of the camera and these little uprights. So when you go to assemble the camera together, uh, you just got to watch out because this lower sensor mount tab here, um, that little tongue actually goes underneath it. So when you're assembling these two case halves together, it kind of goes forward and in like so, and then the rear will press down into place. So 
let's play with putting the board into place. Best way to do it is uh, first to do a little bit of case prep. So let's get this up close and have a look. These screw bosses here, um, I do give these a quick clean out before I send each case out. The way these are printed is they're printed in a, a bed of powder um, and then a laser comes around and melts that powder. So it creates a very homogenous material, um, much stronger than a traditional FDM or the type of 3D printing that you see people doing in their bedrooms. Um, but one side effect is quite often these little holes and things can have a bit of uh, that powder left still in them. So I do clean them out. <coughs> But if you want to double check it, uh, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Uh, so what I do is I just quickly give those a little ream around the top edge. Just to make sure that there's not going to be anything there. Try not to remove too much material because these are pretty well... Sorry, that was off camera. That's really bad. Um, these are pretty well sized for the screws. You don't really have to remove much. You just want to make sure that none of that loose powder is in there. Then what you're going to do, <coughs> going to do, you're going to take that heat sink and you're going to push it into its position. Um, this is how you make sure that the heat sink aligns perfectly when you put the board in. So then you take your board. Now notice that this USB connector, I'm just going to refocus that. This USB connector does actually protrude into the little USB connector hole on the rear of the unit. So now imagining that your board doesn't already have the heat sink on it, you're going to get that USB connector about right. Try and eyeball where these three stand uh, screw bosses are and try and make sure that they're going to align with the three holes in the PCB. So once you've done that, now it's easiest to do this step before we glue the sensor in. So we'll get that uh, the heatsink mounted onto that board. So you're just going to simply put that uh, USB section into the hole in the rear of the case. Um, keep an eye out for where those screw bosses are. And then you're going to settle that PCB into place. Now because I've already got my heatsink on here and I'm, it's very difficult to take off, uh, I'm just going to symbol mine and it's very hard to see but like the screw bosses all line up so that's perfect you do get a little bit of play like not a lot but a tiny little bit of play the other thing to do is that you do have to um, check out your sensor cable so if you've got an old style board like mine it's a little bit harder because you have to have that assembled on the underside of the board uh, this cable comes doubled up slightly differently, but you'll see that I've got it folded very close to that rear edge of the cable there. So I'm just going to try and get you a closer look at this. Yeah, so you can see that fold is very close to that plug. Um, it does need to be, because with these old boards it really is right at the limit of its travel. Right, so now let's talk about putting the sensor into the case itself. Alright, so the sensor goes into the case. Basically what you want is a little bit of silicon glue on the top and the bottom. I put some on the sides, but I found out that that's not really necessary and actually made it a little bit more difficult to get the board in place. So just a little bit at the top and bottom, all you're doing is uh, isolating the movement, tying it into the case. Um, the good thing about using silicon or a, a, a soft glue like this is that uh, when it comes to servicing the camera later down the line, you can simply remove the silicon thread that holds the front of the lens, push on the lens, and the whole unit will pop out the back without too much uh, resistance. Um, means that if you, I don't know, in the rare rare case that you manage to break a case or you want to change it around, or if you do what I did and put your sensor unit in upside down the first time around, then uh, at least you can pull it out and put it back together without too much drama. So get that in there, um, put it in a nice warm place for it to cure. Once it's all cured up, then you can reassemble the case. 
or reassemble the board into the case I should say. Get that in there, get your little socket lined up. So I'm just going to press that home now. You will hear it click when it goes into place which is good. Um, it does fit both ways and I found out the hard way that if you fit it the wrong way the camera just simply doesn't power up, um, doesn't actually damage anything which is awesome. But uh, yeah, if you if you put it all together and it's not powering up, uh, double check that your sensors run the right way. Because uh, I freaked out that when I tried to repair mine that I hadn't been very successful and it turned out to just be the sensor. Okay, so you've got that in, all in there, your sensor's glued, you've got your ribbon cable put in, uh, board's all nicely located, double check well, sometimes when your board is uh, just sitting there, the buttons actually don't work very well. But double check that they do work. In this case, all of mine are working. Now, what you might notice is that I actually have a little bit of black electrical tape just in there. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I've just put that in behind the buttons. Uh, that just stops any grass or debris getting into these button openings. Um, previously the Mobius cases were actually quite well enclosed, it turns out that they've recently modified their design and they've put vents all along one side, so now this uh, camera is probably actually better enclosed than the original. So I'm just going to chuck that down for a second. Go back into my little bag, my little thing of screws and grab a couple. Now these are little self-tapping plastic screws. Um, and one thing that you really want to pay attention to when you're doing this, the first time, just simply get them located, wind them in. If you pull it apart for any reason and are redoing it, reverse the driver until you feel it click down into place. There we go. And then drive it home. And what that'll do is make sure that the self-tapping screw isn't re-tapping another thread. Uh, if you do happen to just chuck it in and drive it home a couple of times without finding that thread again, uh, you will destroy the plastic and the screw bosses. Um, so same again, because I'm, I'm redoing this, it's not the first time, I'm going to back that out until I feel it click, and then drive it in. You know you've got it right because as you go to put it in, it uh, offers very little resistance. Um, it's almost like screwing it in to an existing thread, which is exactly what's happening. Okay, same again for the last one. There we go. Okay, so that's the PCB in. Now you can officially double check all your buttons. Yep, they all work nicely. I'm going to chuck my little piece of dash mat in. If you've got something there, maybe a couple of layers of sellotape or um, electrical tape or whatever you want to use, might work well for you. Um, I use this. It just makes sure that the battery stays in position. So I'm now going to hook up my battery, lay that down into place. Now, you will see here that this little battery connector is quite high and gets quite close to all the rest of these features. So when you look at your case, you will see that one side of it, let me just chuck this bit down, one side of your case does have one big step and one with a little notch in it. Now these here stop any side play happening at the front of uh, the case when they're assembled, but you just want to make sure that when you put that in that that smaller notch there is going to clear the battery mount. So that's actually a brand new one. I'm going to use mine. Mine was one of the test pieces. You can see I've cut away the plastic. And once you've got that all in there, it's just a matter of closing up the back. There'll be a little bit of resistance as you put that together. And it just requires a little bit of force and you'll see that the holes in there line up nicely. So, 
the same again grab your screws for me third or fourth time that I've pulled this one apart for various reasons I'm just going to back that up until I get that click feel that screw drop into the thread and just wind it home these ones now all of these you don't want to wind like screw them in too hard they're tiny um, and they are going into pretty small screw bosses so you got to be fairly gentle the whole time um, really feel this the screw will tell you when it's when it's had enough these back ones do kind of go in until they're pretty flush with that rear surface though so there you go it's a nice clear view so you can see nice and flush there not too much issues now what you've got on the back here you'll see there's two holes this one is a recording indicator hole and this one here is your reset button the Mobiuses do sometimes for random reasons lock up uh, one thing you do want to do is not press the power button and the record button at the same time and they're directly opposite and it's kind of hard you do tend to go to press the record button and your finger just happens to be on the place of that one it's just a, uh, a thing to try and avoid actually one thing I have missed while I've had this all apart is the lens so uh, in the white center section of your Mobius Mini there is this clear recording indicator lens what you need to do is push that out of the white piece uh, you'll see it is quite long so um, what you do need to do I put mine through the case and then used a oh, one of the fiance's nail files to file it down to the right thickness um, an alternate option would be to actually instead of putting it from the inside outwards put it from the outside in um, and then you won't actually have to change the length but you will have kind of a, a wider section around the front uh, when I put that in I just put a dot of super glue either side and that just worked itself in between the parts um, and then when I've clear coated this it clear coated the lens and made it nice and shiny where I'd sanded it uh, obviously I've already clear coated the lenses that I that I send out so uh, you'll just want to touch that up with a little bit of clear nail polish if you do um, happen to sand yours down so now you've basically got a working HD backpack last thing to do is the lens um, and just make sure that the front of this lens is nicely secured when we initially built these we were doing some testing if you don't do this step that lens tends to wiggle a little bit inside the case uh, and can cause a bit of issues with um, jello and vibration so this is where this little dental pick comes in really handy but anything of a similar kind of size could even probably use a toothpick or something you just want to push this silicon thread into that gap between there now when you've had your case apart you would have noticed that the lens has two grooves in the barrel uh, down inside here so what I do is I actually push it quite a way down um, and then it's just a matter of working it around this lens as you get to the far side it's going to get pretty tight um, this is a good thing because it means that it's not going to slip out and cause any issues but uh, it can be a little bit fiddly to try and get into place so just bear with me while I fight with this I think I've just won that battle so once you get it around there and it's just a matter of working that around getting it all to sit into place there's no specific depth you have to do it down to um, once it's in there it's not going to come out in any, in any hurry
There you go. Barring a little bit of smudges on the lens, that is pretty well assembled. That lens is nice and isolated with the case. And I wouldn't expect to have any issues with that. Just gonna grab a little lens glass, give that a bit of a tidy up. And that is now ready to go. Now one thing to keep in mind, obviously we did put that board in essentially upside down, so you will need to download the Mobius software and flip the image, but that's a very simple thing to do once you download the M setup software. The other thing to remember now is that your SD card will go contact side up when you put it in there. Um, Try not to shoot your SD card across the room. You will see that one modification I made since the Nick Burns video is that I've added a little bit of extra protection here for the SD card so that in the event of a crash that can't take a hit and cause the SD card to eject. In all the crashes that we've had with these we've never had a battery ejection. So now you should be able to power up your Mobius Mini. Got your card in there, hopefully you've formatted it, it's all set up. You have power, and this is your record button. Give that a press, things should start flashing. If you look at the rear, you have the recording indicator on the rear of the camera. And that thing's good to go. A little bit of camera inception going on. So when you stop, same again. That light will go solid. If you want to turn it off manually, you just press and hold that until it flashes. Otherwise, uh, I think standard they come out with a 30 second auto turn off time, so quite often I just hit the stop recording button. Don't bother about turning it off manually. Um, if you need to, well when you hook it up to the computer, that's what this here is for. There is a little opening here, so if you are game to give it a go, you can actually what solder to the back side of this USB. It's a 10 pin USB so the pins are tiny but uh, you can actually basically get to the 5 volt input source for this. Um, put out a little set of fly leads, we've done it before with a little plug on it and then you can actually hook the camera up to the 5 volt regulator in your quadcopter. Um, you can then turn this to record on power uh, within the setup software and every time you connect a flight battery it will start recording. It's a great way to make sure that you don't miss any footage. Personally though I tend to pull this on and off um, quite often and I actually just fly using it standalone with the internal battery. So at 1080p 60 frames per second you get about half an hour's worth of uh, recording before it needs to be recharged. Um, I think you get a little bit longer at 1080 30, haven't personally tried it just yet but uh, yeah, I found that to be perfectly adequate for me. Go out, fly a few batteries, record some, and then I tend to switch it back to top mount and go flying again. You will see in the case that I have provided two little washers. So I'm just going to chuck this stuff down, refocus here. Let's bring in the Nemesis. So the 8mm long titanium screws that are included with the Nemesis um, in the original kits are long enough to mount the camera without having to change it out. Um, if you have one of the newer kits that has the stainless steel screws, you'll see that I've included 6mm screws uh, in the kit for the top here. Um, so what you will get, you will actually get some 8mm screws in with the camera case. That will allow you to mount this. Now, um, depending on how you've set your quadcopter up, you'll see here I've got a cable tie holding my uh, little dipole antenna to this rear spine. So these two washers here, just simply for the back here, so that when I put the camera on it keeps it above that cable tie and you're not stressing out the plastic um, of the case too much. Now, another good thing to point out, don't put any type of shock absorbing material underneath the camera. These screws that, it are held, that it's held on with 
are structural to the integrity of the frame. Meaning that if these aren't a solid connection, uh, there is a chance that when you crash, this top plate and that material may compress, which could actually mean that your camera cage could come loose. So uh, you really do want these done up properly, nice and tight, um, and that's going to keep the whole structure of the quadcopter nice and solid. Also means that there's no chance of soft mount induced jello or vibration uh, getting into your footage. So we find that it actually records really, really well um, when it's properly hard mounted like this. These two parts have now just really become one. It's a much more solid option than pretty much any other camera mounting out there. And you may even just be able to see the little gap at the rear now for that cable tie. If you happen to be using a 2020 uh, VTX in your stack, um, there's a good chance you won't have a cable tie up the top, so you don't need to worry about the washers. Just bolt the whole thing down solid and you're good to go. So uh, after that, I think that's pretty much it. That's a pretty long video. Um, Thank you very much for purchasing the HD backpack. As I said, I probably will revisit this video when I have a original Mobius to do the decasing and building right from the start. But um, I hope that helped you. I hope it's all straightforward. Obviously, if you have any questions, any issues whatsoever, um, get in touch. Facebook, I'm always uh, watching that. It's probably the fastest way to get a response from me. Otherwise, uh, flick an email to brdmdesign at gmail.com uh, message me through the store basically all of those things I'm going to be monitoring and I'm more than ha happy to help out and explain uh, any questions that you may have so hope that's all good hope you love your camera and uh, happy flying thanks very much, see ya